So good afternoon, everyone, on this Friday. I saw a request to do um, review the vowels, and we can go ahead and do that. And if I had a, had a whiteboard, it'd be a lot easier for me to do that. Um, Cause there's, there's a way I learned from my grandmother, um, Shirley Kendall up in Anchorage, how to review or how to go over the vowels. And I believe it was a very good way of, of reviewing them, but we'll have to make do with what we have now. Um, Again, there are there are eight different vowels in our language. And within those vowels, there's a short vowel and a long vowel. Usually start with the short, the short vowels. And those are one moment. The short vowel A. And that's said, ah. Uh, thank you for the tip, Wrangle LSA. Uh, I'll check into that. So again, here's the, the, the vowel sound, ah, the letter A, ah, ah. And the English example we can use for this, uh, my auntie Nora used was, was, wa, a. And the Tlingit example we would use is tus, tus, tus. I'll write this in the chat. Oops. Okay. So when you write this out, if you're writing it on um, on paper, the um, there's a tone mark above the A on tus, and this means thread. The next next one we have is eh, the E sound, eh, eh. Short, uh, short E sound, short E vowel, eh. And our example for this one, English example can be 10. That's, it makes the same sound, te, 10. And the clinking example would be te. And again, there is a high tone above the E. And this means rock, rock or stone. 
And the other, the other one would be a short I sound, a short I vowel, sorry. And this one would be Hit, hit, like he hit something. It's that same short I. And the clinket example for this short I's I vowel is hit, which means a house. Hit. Like um, the house I'm from is Gao Hit, the drum house. That's the house I'm from, Gao Hit. So our example for that is a house. And our last short vowel is the U. Uh. Uh. And our English example for this sound is put, put, put. And clinket, our clinket example will be Good, 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 which means a dime. We'll go ahead and go over those again. The short, short vowels. A is a. Uh, dime, like the, uh, the dime, 10 cents. Again, the short vowel, a, a, uh, a, uh, tus, tus, e, short e, it would be a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, ta, ta, ta. Next one, I, I, hit, 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 hit. And our last short vowel is the U, U, good, good, good. And now we go to the long vowels. First one, ah. English example, the car, the Swedish car, sob, ah. And our clinket example for this word, ton. Ton, which means sea lion. Ton. Ton. So remember, I said that I think it, uh, there's very multiple meanings in um, in our words. So an example of this would be. I would say 
I am a man of the drum house. So tan, and if it's used at the end of a word and a nun and noun, uh, can mean a man or a woman of um, a house. So my example was gauhitan ayachat. I'm a man of the drum house. And also in our name, my clan name, Kagwantan. Remember I said our people would shorten words and this was, uh, Kagwantan is an example of that as well. Uh, the original name of our house was uh, Kawakani Hit, uh, the house that burnt. And so then it became Kawakani Hit Tan and then from there, they shortened it again to Kagwantan. So that's how the name became to came about from Kawakani Hit to Kawakani Hit Tan, and then shortened it from there to Kagwantan. And the next long vowel we have is the EI. English example. Vain, that same, same E-I, A, A. And the clinket example, cocaine, cocaine, cocaine which means um, yarn. Cocaine. Next one, we have the double E, E. E. And the English example, seek, seek. The clinket example is also seek, but there's a high tone above the first E which means uh, belt, belt, seek, seek, seek. And the last one we have for the long vowels is the double O, ooh. Ooh, like moon, ooh. Clinket example, douche. Douche. Douche, which means cat. Any questions so far? Yeah, I use a lot of my auntie's books. I use a lot of my auntie's books that uh, she wrote with my Uncle Richard. 
Um, so a lot of the examples and stuff will be coming from uh, Beginning Thlingit, written by Nora Downhauer, my dad's oldest sister. So those are some of the examples I use. And the one I use for now, I'm using for now, um, with the examples is uh, Clinket Spelling Book, Undo Spelled Cook. That's what I'm using. It's the older version. It's backwards, uh, so it's going to come out. Uh, Siwaska should have them. Clinket Spelling Book. It's also, this was, uh, I believe, this is the first one, first first edition. So it goes back to the 80s. Yeah, this one says it was 1984 was when they had this one spelled out or written out. It's got a lot of good, good things in there. Um, for example, uh, also the Sneaky Sounds book is a very good one. Uh, it'll help teach you with some of the, some of the, uh, some of the sounds you may have trouble with. Like I know people tend to have trouble with the underlying, underlying sounds, the pinch sounds. Um, a little more guttural. Um, let's see. We'll go. Over. Yeah, the word for blue jay. It's kind of a tongue twister, I guess. And to me, it sounds like the. If you ever listen to a blue jay when he's uh, making his blue jay call. Uh, the clinket name for it kind of sounds like it. If you listen to it closely, you listen to that blue jay. So for me, that's sometimes that um, some of the the names we have for thinget also match with the sounds it, it sounded like to us in thing in in our own minds. So if you take the example um, when you're sipping coffee, coffee huasuk. I'm sipping on coffee. So when you sip coffee, it makes a certain sound. So to me, that's what it sounds like. That's what our people made that made it sound uh, made that word from. Coffee kwasuk. I'm sipping coffee. So sometimes the, the Tlingit name correlates with the sound. I know a lot of, um, I have a lot of friends from up north and they, that's what they told me is that uh, the names they have for animals are the sounds that may, they make in their language. So that's what it sounded like to them. So after they said that, some of those things that I, I remember hearing uh, kind of sound the same and sing it as well. Just, just the example for like sipping coffee. Does anybody have any other questions so far? So I know um, some people have a hard time with um, the pinch sound, so we can go over a couple of those as well. So when, when you see that apostrophe in front of uh, the consonant, all you're doing is holding your breath for a quick second. So here's, here's the example. We'll go with CH first. And clink it, there's ch, and then there's ch, ch, 
chart, chart, which means halibut. Chart. Oops. Send this one out to everybody. Chart halibut. And there's a high tone above the A. Chart. It's the soft, soft, you just say it just like you would uh, uh, without trying to say it too harsh, I guess, or, you know, chart. Ch, ch, chart. Remember that high tone above the A, first A, chart. Now here on the next word um, for eagle, what you're doing is you're holding your breath for a quick second. That's what that, that apostrophe means next to the CH. So when we practice it, we'll practice just the CH first before we say that word. And that's ch. hold your breath when you're saying ch. That's all you're doing. Hold your breath for a quick second. Ch. 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 Chalk. Chalk. Chalk, which means an eagle. Chalk. Chalk. Remember I said that uh, Shlingit, you gotta be careful of how you say things. Uh, if you add the wrong sound to a certain word, you can change that whole meeting. Chalk is hell of it. Chalk. Chalk. So here's an, uh, here's an example of why it's important to um, say the sounds, right? Dukak, his or her maternal uncle, Dukak. Or no, that'd be, uh, yeah, Dukak, his or her maternal uncle. So your mother's brothers would be called uh, Ach kak, my 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 mother's brothers, ach kak. And then for his his or her forehead, dukak, dukak. So just that one sound change difference changes the whole meaning. So remember when you're saying, um, when you see those pinch marks, all you're doing is holding your breath for a quick second. So when you're like the letter K, same thing, just K, K. But now when you see that apostrophe, what you're doing is holding your breath for a quick second. K, 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 K. Chalk. That's so all you're doing is holding your breath. Now, I'm not sure how to explain the underline, but it, you're saying it right here, like you're trying to swallow it almost. Ahwak. Ahwak. My eye. So anytime you say a body part, you have to 
It's got to be owned by somebody, or it because it's still there. If I had a fake eye, and you know, some people have fake eyes, or they're born without one, and they need that that part, or or somebody lost their tooth. So ach uch, it's my teeth. Ach uch. But if I had a tooth that fell out, and when kids' teeth fall out. Du'uchu, because it's not there anymore. Du'uchu. So then, it, the, the, the sound changes. But as long as it's still part of me, or her, or how whoever's it's that body part is still there. A cook. A walk in my eye, because it's still here. But that that K is set in the back of the throat. Let's see. Let me find the underlying. Okay, here's one. So that X is underlined and the first I, or the, sorry, the first A is a uh, high tone as well. Chat, chat, which means fish or salmon, chat. And one way I, I remember my grandma telling me, explaining this one was, it's the gargling X. So when you brush your teeth in the morning, if you use, um, Crest or Listerine, and you gargle it, you're doing the same thing when you gargle. That's how you make that X sound. Chat. 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 Salmon or fish. And okay, hot. The underlying X, underlying pinched one. A lot of people have a hard time with it, but it's just like I said, just practice to practice when you can. Yeah. 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 Which is the mouth. Yeah. I guess what with that one you're trying to gargle and then you pinch it off at the last second. Yeah. 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 Uh, for some of you, you're gonna you're gonna be retraining your muscles in your in your throat to say some of these words. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, just don't don't uh, don't get disheartened, or you know, just be patient with yourselves again. And it takes practice, a lot of practice. If you're not used to speaking Tlingit, Tlingit. I forgot the uh, one X. Uh, kind of uh, they call my uh, they call it the like the hissing X. <laughs> when a cat hisses at you, it kind of makes that sound. <sighs> so that's the best way I can explain that one. And something that we all love. Koo. Koo. Rice, kuh. So we call it rice now, like white rice. Um, no, it doesn't have the underline under it. It's just a plain X, kuh. 
when all of rice kuh. Kuh. So originally this was um, the name for wild rice, the wild rice we had, kuh. And it looks, uh, I think in English, they call them chocolate lilies, if I remember right. It's a brown, brown flower and it grows yay high off the ground. And underneath it, underneath the roots, when you dig it up, you'll find um, it looks like rice underneath. You wash it and dry it. But that's kuh. So, I'm trying to remember remember this one right. I believe a duck pain town when the first um, Russians first came, or the Icht, uh, his spirit helper, when um, when they went on went aboard the ship, the Icht was there, and he his spirit helper told him, um, he's he's. Because at first our people thought that rice was uh, worms. It looked like worms to us, so we didn't want to eat it. But this Icht, his spirit helper, his spirit helper told him, he said, it's okay, it's food. He said, our people, are, we're going to be eating it for a long time to come, so it's okay. So uh, he was one of the first people to try rice, was this Icht. Because his spirit, spirit helper had saw him, saw our people in the future eating it a lot which is true now. I think every meal we have rice. <laughs> so we transferred the name from wild rice to white rice now, what we know as rice. Kuh. 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 Any questions about these, some of these words? How to say it? or if you're having trouble with it. Um, Yake is um, like the spirit, a spirit in general. Yegi, it's his spirit, his or hers, or that animal spirit. But uh, I'm, I can't remember right off bat what they called the spirit helper. I have to think about that. Some of these words we don't use very often anymore. So a lot of times we start to forget about it, we start to forget them. And then somebody asked to go over the underlying necks again. So remember when you're gargling, when in the morning, if you brush, when you brush your teeth or you're done brushing your teeth and you want to use Listerine, and you do what, what you do is when you take that Listerine, you're gargling, you're <laughs> gargle it. So, so you're doing that same thing. <laughs> hot fish, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. So another Eva says she has having trouble with um, the, the W sounds when you add the W to it. So when you see that W at the end of an X or a W, while you're saying it, you're pursing your lips. You keep your lips pursed when you say it. Um, let's see. I don't got my other book with me.
Okay. So the underlying pinched X sound with the W, remember the all you're doing is you're pursing your lips when you say it. So the word for trout, what? So as I'm making that sound, my lips are pursed to saying it the whole time. What? 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 The W next to it, all is it, all is it telling you is to purse your lips when you say it. What? No. No. Which is cloudberries. No. Or an alder tree. Shoo. 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 You're pursing your lips when you say it. That's what the W means. That's all it means uh, while you're saying that's making that sound. Your lips are pursed. Quad. Quad. Down feathers. So let's look for an underlying G sound. Uh, someone is having trouble with that as well. So here's an example why it's important to uh, another one. Say it right. So gooch is a hill. Gooch. Gooch is a wolf. If you don't underline that first G, you're saying a whole different word. So there's gooch, which means hill, gooch, which means wolf. Even um, changing the vowel sometimes can make it change in nouns, it can make it uh, a different word. So from gooch, if you say kach, kach is a rug. So it's very important to say say the word, especially in nouns, I guess, right? Like a rug in general. Or maybe you put a mat outside your, your front doorway. Uh, that can, you can call that botch. Put a rug in your living room, botch. Here's another one that most people up here will say it this way. Chiquena. Chiquena. I'll say Chiquena. Chiquena. And it means tell. Both mean the same thing, slightly different, but that's just the way how I heard it. And Cake was saying Chiquena. Chiquena. And if you wanted to change that to like, um, Chiquena is uh, something that you just kind of do this motion with. You know, you're wiping it, wipe something off. That's what it's describing. So Chiquena. Is referred to as a towel where you where you wipe something up with your hands, or it has to do with your hands. If you needed a napkin, all you're doing is changing aguena because it's for your mouth. Aguena and you're wiping. So that's what that last part of the word is referring to, your the wiping motion. Aguena. Or if you needed a um, a tissue for your nose, uh, 
because it's for your nose. It comes for your nose. So chakwena, chakwena. Chakwena is how I heard it in Cape when I was growing up there. So, but most, almost everywhere else will say chakwena, chakwena. Any questions? Everyone okay with the sounds and stuff right now? Or if you wanna ask me something pers uh Ask it on, ask it, let me know and I can ask um, Rob to put you on the panelist so you can ask me the question if you'd like. Or just message on the chat and ask Rob to let you on. I'm in Juno at the moment. Um, chew gum. I know when we were growing up, uh, all our teachers told us not to not to chew gum in class, but uh, you know, gum is uh, very helpful, especially when you need to spit for thing good. So the word for um, devil's club, tzacht, tzacht, tzacht. Again, maybe we, this one has a few pinch marks in there. Tzacht, tzacht. Uh, it is still cloudy here. Any questions about these um, vowels and uh, consonants we've gone over so far? Zacht, 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 doubles club. Doubles club is a very strong medicine. Uh, most people, if you don't know if you're allergic to it or not, uh, what they always told us to do is um, take just take part of it when it's fresh and rub it on the back side of your hand. And if you get a reaction to it, you know, then you know you're allergic to it. But if, if nothing happens, then you know not to. So just a tip on that. Since we're on the subject of Devil's Club, you know, just to be careful, mindful of that. Or if you're around kids, uh, there's a few teachers around here and you don't know if the kids are allergic to it or not. That's what I would do too. I just take a small bit and rub it on the back side of their hand to see if they're allergic or not. You know, just to be careful and mindful of our kids. It's 
and some things should show up you know, fairly uh, right off the bat if they're allergic to it or not. I know our people used to use it for tuberculosis as well. Um, my partner from Cake, she was talking to me about it and she said uh, when her grandparents, when they found out she had tuberculosis, she said they roasted it. And I'm not sure how they did it. She doesn't remember either, but they would take it and roast it. And then they would grind it up into a fine powder she doesn't remember if it was, you know, the main stock or the, the bark. She doesn't remember which part it was. They roasted it and then they'd mix it with uh, hooligan oil. You know, and she said when they mixed it up, they gave her a tablespoon of it. And when they gave it to her, it knocked her out for two days. But they gave it to her uh, for a few days. And that's what cured the tuberculosis in her. And when they when the doctors went back to see what uh, if there was anything left in her lungs from the, from it, um, they said the only thing they found was scarring uh, the scars from the tuberculosis in her lungs, but she had been cured from it. So that's just how powerful uh, doubles club can be. Um, as, and a lot of our medicines that we've gone that have, we've lost, you know, that's probably one of them. We're not sure how they did it but that it was very strong and potent. And so it was, it, it was cured tuberculosis for our people. And Devil's Club is a natural ginseng. So it's a natural ginseng. And I remember one of my other grandmas telling me that um, they would get the small ones and they would grind up the roots. They take the roots from next the ones that were next to the creek and then they would use that one the, when they dig up that one, clean the roots off real good, dry it, and then grind, roast it and grind it. And they would do that, mix that with water when they would get sick. And so that was some, one part of the medicine I remember they did. But as for you know, the one for tuberculosis, I'm not too sure. But that's just how powerful our medicines were. And another thing about when you're working with medicines, um, they said the opposite clan, anybody that was from your opposite was always the strongest medicine that anybody could give to you. And it was very important that if you're doing medicines or working on food for anybody, that you thought nothing but good thoughts as you were working into this, or as you were working on it. Because they said if you thought any bad thoughts, just like, um, you know, when you're working, it shows, it shows in your work when you're mad, uh, anything you're doing with your hands, it, it'll come out. So you have to think good thoughts when you're working on medicine or food. I remember them saying that because they're gonna feel whatever you put into that. So that's why it's very important for you to be in a good state of mind when working on anything for anybody, even for yourself. My grandma always told me, she said, um, when you're working on food, you gotta, if you're gonna work on it, uh, you gotta work on it like you're gonna eat it. You're gonna be the one eating it. And that's how you do it with working on food for others. You wouldn't give somebody something else that you wouldn't eat. So the same thoughts go into working on food and medicine especially. You want those things to be, to have the, you want to put, uh, some people say they put your energy into it. You're thinking good thoughts and that's what you're doing. You, the people that are going to eat it or use it will feel those, those things and it could make them even more sick. And you don't want that. So working on food or medicines, it's important to be in a good state of mind. If you're frustrated with something, wait to work on it and then come back later. So just some, some things to remember as we're working on foods or medicines, whatever you're gonna give to somebody. You know, always think, my grandma, always think about those good thoughts and my grandma would always pray, uh, pray before you do anything. Um,
Any questions? Nobody has any more questions they'd like to ask or Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and uh, finish. Um, so if uh, you just want to work on those sounds, remember in Tlingit, um, the sounds never change. Whatever the way it's written is the way it's always going to be pronounced. So those letters are always going to be pronounced the same exact way. Um, I remember my uncle Richard saying that uh, just like in German, when they write things in German, it's pronounced just as you read it. And so same thing in Tlingit, there's no silent letters, there's no, no tricks to it. Whatever is written out is how you say something. There's not a silent letter in Tlingit. So just remember that and practice some of these words. Um, um, if, you, if you have a question for the next time, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll do what I can to help. If you're struggling with something, just let me know. You folks have a safe weekend. Uh, everybody want, mind yourself and be careful out there. So, oh, here's another one. Yeah, we all have different ways of um, saying things. And this is uh, one of the ways I came up with. Uh, I asked some of the fluent speakers for this uh, also. Um, this is the word I came up for, mask. Which means the cloth in front of your mouth, pretty much. So that's, or the cloth or the fabric. Some people will say, uh, what do they call it? That's, that's another way of somebody, uh, another way of saying it. But the way I, I describe it uh, is it's, uh, the cloth in front of your mouth. So everybody mask up. Everybody wear your masks. You wash your hands. Everyone be safe. So Monday cookie, we'll see you all folks Monday.